Hey, Owen here, and today we're going to be taking a look at my model collection. So today it is exactly three years since I created Quick Kits, so I thought it would be cool to have a look at the collection of models that I have built up during that time, and also some of the ones that I built before Quick Kits. So, here they are. Okay, so I started building scale models about 10 or 11 years ago or something ridiculous like that and one of the first models that I built, or two of the first models that I built, were these 172nd scale Revel tanks. We didn't thin paint or anything, um, my dad did most of the painting. But yeah, that I think was what really got me into scale modelling. So Next I had a phase of Warhammer and this is the only model that I have left because um, I sold the rest of them and this is a special figure from a convention that I went to. After I had sold my Warhammer I had a very long break from, well, a couple of years break from building scale models, probably about two years, but then I came back and did these really terrible Airfix kits. There's Tiger One and Sherman and the moulding is just so bad. Spitfire, I've since used it for experimentation I practiced doing the pre-shading technique with the pencil on the wing, as you can see there, which I then did on my BF110 many years later. In year nine, I went on a geography trip to the Trafford Centre in Manchester, and I bought this Revel 172nd scale Lancaster bomber. This is maybe five or six years ago. I used a combination of Revel enamels, which were the wrong shade of brown, and you can see the decals have silvered quite badly. And what I used to like to do was like, if there was any detail in the engines or stuff, I'd make it so I didn't glue some of the parts together. So you can actually take off that and then see the <laughs> really badly painted engine inside. I coloured the canopy um, frames with a Sharpie. Then I made this Arado Night Fighter. Um, again, you can take the side off and see the not very interesting landing gear. This is Revel as well. Um, and the worst mistake I made with this one was to paint it with artist's acrylic colours and I sort of just mixed them. Like it's got loads of brush strokes visible on it, like you can feel them. I used watered down black paint to make gun smoke and exhaust stains. And yeah, I mean, construction I guess is okay. I did this, which has also become a test subject, as you can see, but this mottling was some of the first mottling that I attempted to paint, and I did that just by dry brushing splodges onto it. Then I got this set here, which is the Battle of Britain set from Airfix, and so I built Hurricane, this Spitfire, which you may have seen a build video of if you watched my old channel, and you might have seen a build video of this BF109 as well. And I used to do washes of just like grey acrylic paint and it kind of makes them look a little bit gross. And oh, like I never used to do anything like sand down the join seams or anything, so some nice join seams there. And then there's the Heinkel. The moulding on this was especially bad. Like the fit was awful, but not as bad as the fit on this kit which is an Airfix Junkers something or other. The, the plastic was so cheap and nasty on this kit and the decals silvered like crazy and I, got, I remember getting so annoyed with it. I just wanted the decals to look nice and I didn't know what I was doing. It's one of my least favourites, most hated. Then I got this Airfix set uh, with a Mosquito and ME262. But as you can see, join seams haven't been filled or sanded. Um, I've used watered down acrylic paint for exhaust stains. The canopy is pretty clear, but the frame lines aren't very neat. I didn't know about being able to scratch off the paint with a matchstick. The chipping is just sort of random splodges on it. I've not really thought about where I was putting the chipping. And then with the ME262, um, again, the mottling was just stippling paint on with a brush. I did this little mini diorama of some German soldiers and I saw a photo on the internet and I recreated it with the little figures. I'm quite pleased with that one. I built this Airfix Westland Whirlwind and 
By this point, I had learnt a bit about applying varnishes and stuff. I, I think I put vinegar in the water to apply the decals or something. And I thought that would stop them silvering, but they still did. And I was annoyed with that. <laughs> um, I've given it a coat of matte varnish, but I used matte varnish that is for wood. So it didn't actually dry matte. So it's got this sort of satin finish. But on this one, I actually thinned my paint down. So um, there aren't as many brush strokes and it's getting a bit neater. Then I think I built this Mustang, which you may have seen a build video of on my old channel. Again, um, it's got a bit broken since. Uh, this was a Revel kit and the molding was horrific. Again, I've sanded, or well, I haven't really sanded, I've sort of cut down the join seams between the parts and I've used masking tape on the lines. Although I didn't use modeling masking tape, I used artist masking tape, which is why the edges aren't very neat. And I finally got some decal solution. So that was another step that I took to becoming better. Then there is this, and I actually really love this. This is the old tooled Airfix bolt and pull defiant. And the decals disintegrated because it was quite an old kit. Again, I used uh, wood matte varnish, which is why it's got this horrible yellow satin finish. Um, and I attempted to make some bullet holes in it, which is pretty cool. I've done some dry brushing of the rivets to bring them out. So I, I am really fond of this model, actually. Airfix Mark 7 Churchill. I didn't know about applying a uh, gloss coat underneath the decals by this point. So they have still silvered a little bit. So this 170 second scale Italeri Spitfire was probably one of the largest milestones. So in this one, I finally found out about the correct application of matte coat and gloss coat. So I found out about applying a gloss coat under the decals and then applying the decals with decal solution and then putting a matte coat over them and then doing a chalk wash to bring out the panel lines. The only thing is that I put too many coats of gloss and matte varnish on it and it's actually ended up losing all of the detail. So with this one, I found out how to do all of the techniques, but I just haven't had enough practice out of them to do them very well yet. Then there's this Stuka, which is actually one of my favorite models still, which is a Revel one. Uh, the molding was really good. The panel lines were great. And I actually, I used all of the techniques that I had learned on this Spitfire. Uh, I used them on this Stuka and I used them more correctly. So you can tell there's been a massive improvement in um, applying the varnishes and stuff because that one you can tell it's really thick. This one is nice and thin. Then I started this Gloucester Meteor which is from a manufacturer called Frog and I never finished it because I bought it from a little model shop and it didn't come with the decals um, or the clear part. Um, so I couldn't really do much with it and the moulding was pretty bad because it's obviously very old. Um, so I would quite like to finish this one one day though. Then I went to the Cosford Aircraft Museum. Airfix were doing a builder kit thing. So I got this English Electric Lightning and <laughs> I painted it fancy colours. Then I got this Airfix Sunderland flying boat for my birthday and it was a really old Airfix kit. The fuselage was horribly warped. Um, it's got raised detail. And it also took so many coats of white paint to get this colour nice. Another Stuka, this one is the Airfix one, which the moulding was nowhere near as good as that on the Revel one. It's Airfix BF109G, which is one that I repainted that I had built at the same time as this one but I repainted it. That one's probably a milestone as well because of the mottling, which I then later improved on my technique with the FW190. So that's interesting to compare. Then I built this, which is a 176 scale Airfix Stug. I attempted to make like the German sort of blended camouflage by applying chalk pastels and then blending them and then spraying it with varnish. But when I put the varnish on it, it sort of made the chalks really subtle so it didn't really work. The Hawker Typhoon and I really love this kit. 
And I, I think I really enjoyed this one because the tooling was so good and I didn't film it. Um, a couple of the parts fell off and got lost, which so they've been replaced with cardboard or a bit of wire. Um, and there's a review of this on my channel. Some people ask why does it not have the tail wheel? That is because I originally built it to be flying because previously it had them all hanging from my ceiling. But with this Typhoon, I decided I would build it with the landing gear down after I had glued that up. Finally, we get on to sort of like the proper quick kits era. So there is this, my, um, the 1960 something molding of Revel's PZL P11C. And I think it's quite nice that I've just finished building the Mirage Hobby 148 scale PZL P11C. So that's pretty cool to compare. So you can see that the decals were really horrible and old and they turned so yellow. And I didn't sand down that join seam apart from here. I left it there, which is weird. But I really like my dry brushing that I did on the wings to bring out the detail and um, some of the exhaust stains and stuff that I did with chalks. The B17G. It should have a diorama, but I was going to improve the diorama and I've never got around to doing that. So if you watch the video, you'll see that it's on two halves and then the two halves split apart. It was one of the most detailed kits that I built. So I was really proud of it for that reason. So after that, I built the Spitfire, which I've now sold and the Zonda Craftfort Zoe 234, which I've also sold. And then there was this Airfix Tiger, which I actually built with my friend who was quite young at the time. Um, the reason I actually put it on the base was because I accidentally snapped this track when assembling it. So I thought to make the most out of it, I'd make it look like it's been shot. So I warped bits of the hull and I warped bits of the track and I made this little base with a shell crater. So I tried to sort of hide my little mistake there. The Tamiya 135th scale Panzer Kampfwagen 4. I really like the blending that I did with the colours on this one. The only thing is I think I slightly overdid the chipping, but maybe I haven't, I don't know. And the mud was really fun to apply and that was my first larger scale model that I had done and I really enjoyed building that. Then I built the Chiha and the BF110 which I have sold. Then there is my absolute favourite plane, the FW190 and the modelling on this I am still so proud of and I really enjoyed building it and I think it's one of the most beautiful planes as well. So you can see with this one how much I've improved on that modelling technique. This is the old tooled Airfix T34, which I actually really enjoyed doing, even though the molding was pretty horrible, like there were massive gaps in it. Oh, I also pushed the tracks down with little paper clips that are set inside to try and make it look a bit more realistic. So the Sherman Firefly, which I don't really want to touch in case I break it. But um, yeah, I really like the chipping that I did on the decals and this sort of color discoloration. I'm just really proud of this one. Here is actually a Tasker moulding, which was reboxed by Tamiya. So that was really awesome. Then I built the Mustang, which I have sold. Um, then there is the B5N2 Kate, which for the first time I used Humbrol Maskell and I did some chipping by painting the model silver and then putting the mask on and then painting it green. And I really like that technique. I thought that was really cool. So that was the first time I tried that and the wildcat that came with it in the set. Again, the molding was really good apart from the cockpit not fitting. It was a little bit rushed and in places you can see where the, the varnish hadn't dried quite properly by the time that I put the chalk wash on. So in places the chalk wash is stuck a little bit. The reason for me rushing was because I had to get back to uni. Like I finished that like the day before going to uni and then I had to film the shots of it um, on the day that I left. So that was pretty hectic. Um, then I built this Stug as like the first snow camouflage that I did. At the request of many people, I decided to try one of these Bandai Gunpla Gundam kits. I don't know much about Gundam and things, but 
the molding of this was insane. Like the parts were so neat and crisply molded and it fitted together beautifully without any problems. Then there is this new tooled Airfix bolt and pull defiant, which I built using only the basic tools and equipment because Airfix wanted me to do that for their Christmas video. And it's just interesting to compare to the old tooled bolt and pull defiant from Airfix. And yeah, I, I actually really enjoyed building this one just because it was so simple. So it was actually quite fun just to take it back to the basics. Next, we have the Airfix English Electric Lightning, which again is a massive improvement over the old tooling. This is my first experience using Humbrol uh, Metal Coat, which I think has kind of lost its effect now after I varnished it. You can tell from this table that the majority of stuff that I do is World War II, so it was nice to do something a bit more modern. Then we have these super cute uh, Meng kits, which Studio Rockaban um, gave to me to build. They're just so cute and I really like my cartoon style of painting. Um, and they were, they were really enjoyable to build because they were so easy and the fit of the parts was great. And then finally we have my most recent model, which is the Mirage Hobby 148 scale PZL P11C. And there'll be more on this in the video, which is coming out on Saturday. I think this is probably the most advanced kit that I've done because I've added little wires. I've done like tiny, tiny photo touch stuff. So I'm really proud of this kit. And I hope you enjoy the video when it comes out on Saturday. So there you go. That is what is left of my model collection from the past 11 years or something. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.